The following interview was conducted with Gertrude Andrews for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, March the 5th, 2010 at a residence in West Lafayette. Good afternoon, Mrs. Andrews, and thank you very much. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the oral history librarian. Can you tell me where you were born and uh, what city you were born in? I was born in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Okay. And did you go to grade school there? Or high school there? No, I went to grade school in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. And was it a small school? Were there many children there? Do you remember? Well, Worcester is a city of 300,000 at okay. that time. So sure. Okay. So they had a school for children that were going to go on to college and then those that were going to stay in the business world. Okay. Okay. So you had a You so had a choice. You were separated right from the beginning. Oh, okay. The commercial students and the college-bound students. Okay. I presume they still do it. I don't know. Right, exactly. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I had one sister and two brothers. Okay. And we all, you all went to the same grade school together, did you? Were they older or younger than you? My sister and brother were older and one younger. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Did did you uh, can you tell us a little bit about high school? When you were in high school, did, were there any clubs that you belonged to when you were in high school? Recall about any gym? She, did you go to gym? Yeah. She's very good. If you just give her a little bit of time. Uh huh. Um, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna take mm -hmm. off and let you girls visit. Wait. Um, I'm gonna ask you to. I'm gonna cut. Okay. All set. Talk a little. Tell me a little bit about high school. Hmm? Was it? We lived in Worcester, uh -huh. and my father was a school teacher. Okay. He taught. Algebra and geometry and physics in South High School. And some doctor who didn't really turn out know what he was talking about said my mother would live for five years. So There were four of us children, so my mother wanted to enjoy those five years. So we moved to the country in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and she decided she'd like to raise dogs. So she raised pedigreed Scotch colonies. So I grew up attending all kinds of dog shows, even the AKC in New York City. And she not only showed, but she judged dogs. One year we had 25 collies, puppies. And of course, that was a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. Oh. I had to. One time we had dogs in the closet off the, off the dining room, and another time, at the same time, we had a dog with puppies off the, in the room off the pantry. And when I was five or six, I remember I had to sleep on the floor with the dog and her puppies to see to it that she didn't like sleep on her puppies. 
and every time the mother turned over, I had to count the puppies to see that she didn't lay down on the the peewee. And there was always one that was huskier than the others. So I always had to see to it that that after the husky one got the mother's milk flowing, I had to pull it off and put the weaker one on. And boy, I can still see those puppies pumping the mother's I bet. Breasts. But I learned the facts of life from those dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet you did. Uh -huh. I did. And although my father was a school teacher at a, a big school in Worcester, my mother made more money on her dogs than he, than he did. School teaching. Mm -hmm. And it was a happy childhood. Right. And one time somebody came and they said they didn't have any money to buy a pup. But they had a, a gladiola farm. <laughs> and would we... My mother take fifty dollars worth of gladiolas for one of the cheaper puppies. And so my mother, having a th thirteen year old son at that time, said sure. So gave my son, my brother. The job of planting the gladiola bulbs, and, and we we put them out when they came in flowers. We mm -hmm. put them out in a milk can out in the front yard. We lived on the main road between Boston and Albany, Route Nine, and a lot of people went by. And they would stop to. My father put the play yard for the dogs out front. So two, there were two. One yard for the big dogs and one yard for the puppies. And people would stop go in those days for Sunday riding. They, I don't think they go out for a Sunday ride anymore. But in those days, people went out Sunday riding and they would stop and a carload of kids would jump out and go running up to look at the pups and stuff. And of course, then their conscience would follow them so they'd buy some flowers. So we learned the value of money and ways to entice people to spend it. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about your days in high school? Your, uh, when you uh, was high school close to where you lived? Or did you have to take a bus to high school? Well, we lived right next door to number two school. Mm -hmm. I think that was just the first four grades. I know my kid brother was the only one in the first grade so they put him in the second grade, which didn't do him any good because it took him till he was in high school by the time he caught up because he was always, he was just old enough to go to school. My mother.
father couldn't keep him home because he saw everybody else going to school. So he wanted to go to school, but it didn't do him a favor. It took him a long time before he finally caught up with other kids. He was always the youngest kid in the class. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you go to little township schools. Uh -huh. But high school was probably larger, wasn't it? There were more students in high school? I don't know. Finally, my cousin's husband died, and she was a nurse, and they said that uh, They'd make her supervisor of nurses. And I remember it was May 10th, 1931, I got this call. My mother got this call. My cousin, had, husband had died. And my mother told me that I was going to go from Shrewsbury, which was a little suburb of Worcester, to Holyoke, Massachusetts, where the class had 400 students, which was quite a surprise. But it changed my, that was May 10th, 1931. It changed my life because I got good grades. My father decided that I, I was worth sending to college, and I, I, I got some kind of a sixty-dollar scholarship. I don't know how how they awarded them, but I know I got sixty-dollar scholarship. Mm -hmm. I guess that would pay the tuition sure. in those days. Right. So I went to the University of Massachusetts, which was called Mass State at that time. Mm -hmm. And of course, went to four years, got a husband. <laughs> Is that where you met your husband? Yeah. Uh -huh. He was a student there too? He got a job out here at Purdue, and he'd been up Purdue ever since. Did he come after he graduated? Did he come to Purdue after you graduated? And then did you get married in Massachusetts? He went to the University of Missouri for his graduate work. Okay. And were you married at that time? When we were in Missouri, we were. Okay. Yep. And then he came over here. Okay. And then he was. He got to be vice president for research, dean of the graduate school, vice president and general manager of Purdue Research Foundation. When he retired, they hired three men to take his place, and they paid each one as much as they'd been paying him. So they got their money's worth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every once in a while, I re run across somebody that remembers my husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where did you, uh, when you first came to Lafayette, what, what, do you remember what year that was when you came? Was the campus was not very large at that time, was it? Was it smaller? There weren't as many students probably when you came. I didn't bother myself with those things. Mm -hmm. Did Did you buy a house when you came? Where, whereabouts did you live in in, La, in West Lafayette? My husband built a house out in Sugar Hill. Okay. Did he help do the design? Did you people Did you both work on the design for the house? No, he oh. ran across one in a book. Okay. 
I think he said your dream house for 17000 or something like that. Wonderful. So I think he, his aunt gave, it, gave him $10,000 for down payment somehow. Anyway, he and some of his pals in the graduate school worked on the house and I know I paid them a dollar and a quarter an hour one fellow who was a teacher commercial subjects at West Lafayette High School he liked to lay the floors so he spent time after school laying the floor so I the house was uh, hardwood flo floors and then of course I went and carpeted them but, but that house and I you know Schroyer I think was a builder here at that time mm -hmm. and he said that that house was built better than any house he'd ever seen because he said they three nails where everybody else would put one <laughs> anyway and you enjoyed the house mm -hmm. okay Sawyer told my husband he'd see to it that the supplies that were necessary He'd get them on time. So we started in May and we moved in on Thanksgiving. Very good. And finished up after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And it, that was, and uh, since I know where that street is, it was very close to campus. It's the end one. It's actually in Sugar Hill Annex. R.B. Stewart made an exception. So we're behind the cemetery. Sugar Hill comes in. And we're down there under the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good location. Nice, good location. Nice and quiet. When you built your home, was that cemetery already there? Was it? A must is it an older cemetery? Oh yes. Oh. Yes, the cemetery was there. Uh huh. So you, I, since on I know the Cormac Road, mm -hmm. right? And you come Fernleaf Drive, and then Sugar Hill Drive back there. Mm -hmm. R. B. Stewart lived in the house, which is now the president's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. He was your neighbor. Oh yes. Lily and ran the town. Um. Tell me, can you tell me about some of the trips that you and your husband took? You did. Did you, you both like to travel? Oh, he didn't go. Oh. Yeah. The altitude bothered his ears. He let me go. Okay. So. I went everywhere except Australia. I never got to Australia. Did you ever, um, did you fly most places or did you take a, a boat? Did you go by a ship at any, take any cruises? Some of them were cruisers. Uh -huh. Oh, there was a, a girl, I think she must still be around, mm -hmm. Carolyn Gary, 
Yes, she was interested in travel because she would get a group together and she would get her trip free. She was the tour guide. Yes. <laughs> so she, we went on all kinds of trips, Athens and Constantinople, and Norway and Sweden, Denmark, England and Ireland at different times. Yeah. Was there uh, one that was a special favorite that you liked? No. That you liked them all? Mm -hmm. We even got to Cambodia in a place called Shangri-La. Oh, wow. And then everywhere began to look alike. They all had ESO signs. They all had American products. ESO gas was sold everywhere. Mm -hmm. English was spoken everywhere. Yeah. But it was fun. Mm -hmm. Did you do some shopping while you were doing traveling as well? Did you buy some things? No, never bought anything. Oh, okay. No. I went to Ireland some years ago, mm -hmm. and it was really fun. I, I enjoyed it very much. My middle name is Madigan, so I'm partly Irish. Did and you kiss the Blarney Stone? Let me tell you, I did not know that you have to bend over. Yeah. You, you climb up there, you know, up inside. So I was on a tour, and we get up there, I thought it was like Plymouth Rock, where you just kiss the stone. That wasn't it. <laughs> so we get up there, and I'm thinking, I cannot go home and tell my mother that I did not kiss the blind stone. stone. So I did. <laughs> it was okay, but I wasn't the first one. I the people on the tour. I said, Why don't you go first? <laughs> and then I'll. And it was okay. <laughs> But I, I just thought it was like Plymouth Rock it was a stone and you just kiss it. You know, I didn't know you had to bend over. <laughs> Did you kiss the Blarney Stone? No. No. <laughs> uh, oh, I watched other people. Kiss. Yes, I know, right. I have a, um, you know, the Aran Islands, the Irish sweater, the heavy knit sweaters that they make. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of my mother's went years, a long time ago. And I've been here over 40 years, and I had this, the sweater has got to be at least 50 years old. It's a cardigan with the wooden buttons, great condition. Never been cleaned or anything. It's wonderful. It's nice in the fall. You know, it's heavy enough, but not too heavy. Yeah. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed Ireland. It was quite, my brother took his two children there about, oh, four or five years ago. They were grown up and out of college, so he rented a car. And he let the boys drive because he was a little concerned about being on the road because you drive on the other side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when you were, did you belong to the Purdue Women's Club? Oh, sure. Okay, okay. So they had a lot of activities, didn't they? Oh, yes, all kinds of activities. All right. Yeah. They had um, luncheons and spousy, I imagine, dinners. And they had a, a newcomer's group. I know. Whether for the first two years, whether they still do or not, I don't know. Uh, they do, because I belong to the Purdue Women's Club. Because, so we got acquainted with a group that came in about the same time. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. All right. So, when you came, Chauncey Village was not as big as it is now, was it? Was Chauncey Village? They have some stores there. You know, near where the bookstore is and things of that sort? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But we first lived on Pierce Street. Okay. Then we went to Waldron. 507 Waldron. 
and then we moved out. My husband built the house out at in Sugar Hill. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. When you lived on Waldron, was was it a house that you were living in, or was it an apartment? It was a house, five oh seven. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Do you have uh, Do you have children? Two. Okay. A boy and a girl. Uh huh. The girl is in England, and the boy is in Washington State. Okay. Yeah. Did your children go to Purdue? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did when they were at Purdue, did they live on campus or did they live at home? I think we saw to it they lived one semester at least on, on campus. And I, I remember my son wanted to have the car, so he preferred to one semester on campus was all he wanted. And I don't think my daughters had much more than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, are they married? Do you have any grandchildren? Oh, I only have one granddaughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's in Jerusalem. Oh, okay. I wouldn't know her. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's quite a distance. That's quite a ways. And of course, she's in her forties now, mm -hmm. and it's been. A, she was just a young school child when the last time I saw her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. Did you go to um, when you? Well, you and your husband, did you go to the football games or basketball games when uh, oh, with you? Did you? It was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. And the convocations. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. When you came, um, was Frederick, Dr. Hovde was the president when you came? President of the university? Or was it Dr. Elliot? It was. Uh, it was before Hubdi. I think that would have been Dr. Elliot, Ed Elliot. Elliot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Elliot. Right. And we had to go on Seventh Street. Okay, that was where the president's house was at that time. It's along Seventh Street. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, and Dr. Hovde also lived in that house too, didn't he, when he was president? I guess so. Uh huh. Okay. Did they have, when you went to the president's house, did they have what was for receptions or dinner? Yes. Okay. And times when they'd have special lunches, like when Neil Armstrong was here. They'd have a few people before the general convocation at which he spoke. Yeah. Did you get, did you meet Neil Armstrong? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Neil is just a small man in stature. And you see, he was one of the, I had met him early, he was one of the ten distinguished students the first time I met Neil. When he was a student here? Yes. Okay. He was one of Purdue's ten distinguished students before. And at that time, 
there was a local boy. Came from the Lost, R O S S family. And they had a convocation for distinguished students. And everybody, the local people, had gathered around this fellow Ross. And I remember Neil was up by the piano. And <laughs> it's funny how you can predict things mm -hmm. without knowing it. And I went over to him and he said, well, this is how it is. All I do is stand and wait. <laughs> I should have said, your time is coming, but. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and I met Neil's mother. She wanted him to come home to Ohio. And he had to tell her he couldn't go home. He had had to get permission to, to be flown up from somewhere in Texas for this particular convocation. And he said, he told his mother there was an airplane waiting on the, out at the airport take him right back to Texas. No way could he come home to, to Ohio for the weekend. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever um, go to the commencements, to graduations? Oh, yes. Your husband would have to, and Ben, for all, have to go to all of them, didn't he? Your husband was also at the convention at the uh, commencements as well, oh, yes. being the dean and the vice president. Yeah, and all kinds of things. That we all we always had. I think it was row nine. Good seats. Always it. Right. That's a big building at Elliott Hall of Music. It's really nice. Yes, it's very nice. You know, it's only a few seats difference between that one and Radio City Music Hall in New York. And, you know, it's very close. <laughs> and when I first came here, I had been to Radio City. And I'd heard that, and I walked in, I said, mm-hmm. It is like Radio City. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you went? Uh, did you go to a lot of the? Then they had things in. Did they have things in Fowler and Loeb as well as Elliott Hall of Music? Some convos probably were in Stewart Center too. Well, the pen. Yeah. It depended upon how many people they expected. Yeah. Sure. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were there any other uh, act, uh, events that you and your husband went to that you, uh, while he was alive and you were with the university? Do you remember any others? Mostly the receptions and things and dinners. There probably were a lot of them. Did you ever go to the sweet shop? In the Stewart Center, Pappy Sweet Shop. Sure. Yeah, they've redone that. Well, they redone. They put in some uh, stand, little seats now that remind you of just a, of a soda counter. It's really kind of nice. Oh. Yeah. Because that's been around a long time. And the Union is very nice for events. I have been in the Union for a long time, but. One time my husband's picture was hanging and 
southwest corner, or second floor. Mm -hmm. Dean Andrews. Mm -hmm. Did he? Did uh, did somebody? Did a local artist do that? Did the paint? Was it, it's a painting? I think it's the one that's like that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because they. It's not a painting. Oh. But they put it up in. Uh, the, pho the photographer's window was an advertisement. Oh, is that right? Huh. And after it had been in there for a whole year, I went in and said, Don't you think it's time to take him out of the window? So they, they gave it to me. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very nice. It almost looks like a, you know, as though he sat, sat for the portrait to have it painted. Yeah. I, I don't think it's painted. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it's a photograph. Okay. Just did the color. I think I can know mm -hmm. Yeah. Some photographer used it. In this window. Mm -hmm. It's good that you were able to get it. <laughs> yeah, I got it for the asking. <laughs> mm. After telling them it had been there long enough. <laughs> mm. Did um, did you take the? Did you go to ever go to Chicago by train? When you're here, did you take the train to Chicago? A couple of times. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did they have a train that you could take to Indianapolis too? Oh yes, it stopped. Yeah. Uh huh. And went to the Monon. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When your husband, what building was your husband when your uh, what building did your husband work in? Was it in Hubby Hall? Uh, it used to be known as the Executive Building near where the fountain is. Is that where his office was? No. He was very happy that Hubby Hall was full. And he had office down in the vet building. He said he had a privacy. I think finally though they moved him up. Yeah. But for a long time he said he was left to alone. He left to work. <laughs> Nice privacy, which is nice. Yeah. You get a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, State Street. They used to have. Would they have a trolley when you were here? When you came, was there a trolley car that went up State Street, or was it just buses? Maybe. I've seen old pictures, and I'm not sure when they. There used to be a trolley car that would do that. Yeah. Something went on Waldron. Uh huh. You know, there's a. There's a that the space in the middle. Right. Yeah. When you lived on Waldron, you could walk probably to the village because it was right there. Oh, huh? sure, sure. You, know, you could do shopping there. You could walk the whole town. You could walk anywhere. Oh, <laughs> you got a lot up. Oh, that's far for me. <laughs> yeah, you can walk all the time. And you and there used to be um, Loaves was a department store. Oh sure, right near the courthouse. Yes, I was in it a few times. Of course, it's been gone for a long time. It is. 
Oh, yeah, it's not, Lowe's is not, it's closed a number of years ago. Oh, I haven't been downtown. Yeah. But. Well, now they have mall, the mall and things of that sort, you know, like oh. typical new mall. Oh, yeah. I haven't been down there. Yeah. I've had no reason to. Sure. No, I haven't been anywhere. Yeah. Can, um, can you tell me a little bit about the birthday celebration? They had, did you have a cake for your birthday this year? Much ado about nothing. I had a birthday in February, and some of the people in the library surprised me with a cake and, and flowers and four candles, and I blew them all out. I was glad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember they brought me a cake, and I had it on the, left it on the shelf. Next morning it was gone. The housekeeper around here took it away and they said they threw it away. Huh. I gave them hell. Told them they had no right. That if it had stayed there for two months, it was my business to let it get stale. It wasn't up to them to throw my cake away. <laughs> so you know, um, uh, Baring's, Dr. Baring and, and Mrs. Baring, Jane and Dr. Baring, Steve Baring and Jane Baring? Sure, I know my, mm -hmm. my husband recommended them. The board of trustees were horrified. They said, Steve Baring? A medical doctor, an IU man, president of Purdue, and then one of the trustees said, well, Fred Andrews recommended him, I'm going to go see him. <laughs> then the next meeting the board of trustees had, Fred was there, and this man said, if anybody is against Steve Bearing because he's an IU man and a medical doctor, I resign. <laughs> so I remember, I don't know what year it was. But I remember it was a telephone call on February 4th, some year. And I answered the telephone around 7 o'clock at night. This voice said, Steve here. And I said, Steve who? That's the last time I ever said that. So I called my husband and Steve said, I've just been appointed. <laughs> and he said, I want to thank you <laughs> because the trustees couldn't imagine why this medical doctor from Indianapolis should have suggested this visit. But my husband said they were considering Ivy League people, people from Princeton and Yale and people that didn't have any idea of what a, a Big Ten school would be like. It's, they knew. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the, this man that said that Fred Andrews recommended him, I'm going to go see him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Steve could win him over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got, I've gotten to know them. I interviewed, I've interviewed both of them for the oral history. Yeah. yeah which was nice, yeah. yeah. Jane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I 
take pictures at library things. I have a little camera, not a digital, but it's a little and I say, because Jane always took pictures, you know, and I say, I'm the roving photographer for the day. <laughs> and they laugh. <laughs> oh, Jane had a camera everywhere. She I went. know. And, and she would remember, because people tell me that, that a picture would come shortly thereafter and she would send it to you. And she could met, picked out all the names and everything. You know, I've talked to people who've gotten the pictures, which is nice. Oh. Yeah. Well, she took it so she'd remember. Sure. And Steve would remember who they were. Sure, that's right. That's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have a, um, a, a Purdue tradition that, that you'd like to share with us? Traditions such as maybe either football or the little Boilermaker special, the little engine that goes around town? You know the Boilermaker special, some years ago, the basketball team was playing one of the playoffs in Memphis. So the special was going. So it's going down 65. This was in the paper, that's how I know that. And a trucker was following. He said, hey, look at that little engine going down 65. I mean, that's surprising. Because <laughs> it's like a little train, you know? Because <laughs> it can go 65 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. All those uh, students loved it. Oh, I know. Yes, they do. And they have a little one, a smaller version that they have at ross -Aid, and they yeah. do that, which is nice because the other one just won't fit in. You know, mm -hmm. they, the little one can go on the grass there and there yeah. in ross -Aid. Yeah. 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 Any uh, things that I missed that you'd like, that you think that you'd like to share with us? Thoughts that you have? No, but I come from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and I know a young man who got an athletic scholarship to come to Purdue. From Massachusetts? From Massachusetts to play on the baseball team. So as a high school student, I slept under a Purdue banner, never realizing I'd spend the rest of my life out here. And I don't have the faintest idea what he became of him. All I remember was one day his mother called and asked for the banner. And I gladly gave it to her. It didn't mean anything to me at that time. Sure, sure, right. So. You never know how things are going to work out. I didn't know that I was going to spend the rest of my life at Purdue. That's right, yeah. You were born in the Northeast and you spent your time in the Midwest. Where is your husband? Is he, was he also from Massachusetts? Because you said you met him in college. He was from Boston. Okay, okay. So you both came to the Midwest? Mm -hmm. By way of University of Missouri. Sure, okay, yeah. How did he happen to um, pick Missouri? What was his specialty? Was something in the sciences or? Animal husbandry. Oh, okay. Well, he was told that there was a Dr. Fred McKenzie. At Missouri? At Missouri that he should go and study under him. So he took their advice. Mm -hmm. How long were you there? About three years? Did he get his master's and his PhD there? He got his PhD at the University of Missouri. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that in Columbia? Columbia, Missouri? Mm -hmm. On Rosemary Lane, Schweitzer Hall. Yeah, and I took some courses, music appreciation, <laughs> another one, art appreciation. 
Why not? I always wanted to take one or two of a course like that. What I really wanted to take is flower arranging. <laughs> Never got around to it. <laughs> Maybe someday I will. Uh, well, and just put your flowers in, and then take them all out, except three or four. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Anything, did, can you think of anything else that, that I missed? Asking you? Uh -uh. When did, uh, let me ask you this, when did you move here from your house? You've been here a couple of years? Here? Uh huh, in Westminster. my hip. At home? In your house? And when I left St. E's, instead of taking me back to my house out there in Sugar Hill, they brought me here. So I didn't have any say so in the matter. Okay. okay, it's very nice. Nice nice facility. They had in the meantime they had moved my furniture in. Somebody else made the decision for me. Mm -hmm. okay. Said I shouldn't be living alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my son drove off in my car. And that settled it. No car. <laughs> so, so here I am. All right. This has been very nice, Mrs. Andrews. I really appreciate this. Very nice. Nice to, to share those memories. Well, time goes by. I know. Each day it does, you know. In fact, my planning horizon is one day at a time. <laughs> Oh, thank you.